Today I was speaking about the use of drones to, defib to deliver defibrillators to victims of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. My goal with this talk is to have you rolling your eyes less at the end of the talk than at the beginning of the talk. I've spoken on this before at a few conferences and I often feel like I'm the comic relief in between the real science. That we have to completely destruct our current concept of public access defibrillation and rebuild it. It's one example of a way, of way that we need to start thinking outside of the box as far as public access defibrillation goes. We uh, know that public access defibrillators are very rarely used. When they are used, they save lives, but we've got a major problem with actually getting them used when the time comes. So I think talking about drones and other innovations uh, designed to get defibrillators to patients when they need them is a way to, for us to start getting creative and redesigning the way that we think about public access defibrillation. I think we have to stop thinking about public access defibrillation about boxes on the wall, putting them up and hoping for them to be used, and instead start to think about the defibrillator rescuer unit. Recently, with the same group out of Sweden, I'm just thinking about if you have a drone, is it cost effective just to use it for cardiac arrest? Or what, might we be able to share services? Could we put epinephrine on the drones? Um, could we put uh, neuroprotective agents that in the future are discovered to be helpful for cardiac arrest but are too expensive to have on every ambulance? So we could use it as a kind of shuttle for um, other materials and things for other emergencies in addition to delivery of, of defibrillators. I think we really need to think about what would it actually take for drones to be effective?